Good afternoon, my name's Adrian Moore. I'm from the Department of Music and I'm a composer. I work with sound, uh, recorded sound, synthetic sound. And I'm working with sounds in the dark and I'm working with a technique called acousmatic music. What is acousmatic? Well, the acousmatic is a listening stance that favors sound over sight. That sounds really simple. Uh, it asks us to try and um, forget or remove ourselves from thinking about what a sound sounds like. So we, we are asked to try and think about sound in the raw, sound as sound itself, its color, its shape, its density, its speed. Not this sounds like a car or this actually is a car. What sounds do I use? Any sound that I record or synthesize is available to me. And my biggest question as a researcher, as a composer, is how do I make my music and how do other people make their music? I'm really interested in the artistic process when composers are working with sound. So I said at any sound, the whole process begins with recorded sound. And a recent piece, uh, I took very, very common sounds. Um, so got a pair of microphones in a wind jammer, taking the sound of some birds as they, obviously they're not there, they're camera shy. Um, birds flying away from the bird feeder and also a sound of water draining away from my sink. And both of these sounds are incredibly strong metaphorically. Both of them have a sense of motion, flight, uh, dynamism, uh, which shapes their timing and their frequency spectrum. They're great sounds to work with. Any sound is available to me and I like to use microphones like a microscope to capture sounds you wouldn't normally hear. Most of the time you only ever hear balloons going bang. But actually if you blow up a balloon, you have that metaphor of inhale and exhale. The balloon lip can be used to create pitches as air exhales, it like a, exhales from it like a wind instrument. And in fact, as you scrape the balloon, particularly with two microphones either side of the balloon, Imagine listening to that sound with headphones. The sounds that are on the left of the balloon will be coming from your left ear and the sounds on the right from your right ear. So all of a sudden, a small sound like a balloon is projected into a massive space. So when I start recording, my process involves play. Don't tell the bosses, I do have some fun with sound. Uh, and while I'm recording these sounds, I need to think about how to describe them. And I use a very simple method of comparing different poles of description. So I will have hard, soft, rough, smooth, spiked, and rounded. Those of you that know music psychology will know that this is the kiki booba effect. One is a very rough and spiked sound, kiki, and booba is naturally very rounded and soft. So I need to describe the sounds that I'm working with and then I will gradually transform those sounds. I like to think about uh, working with sound as a potter would work with clay. These sounds are in the dark, they're a long way away from me, I need to bring them closer to me. I like to be able to uh, work with them, uh, as I said, like a potter works with clay, but 20 years ago I was working in an analog studio with tape recorders, so I would cut tape and I would actually hold it in my hand. And if I wanted to reverse it, I would reverse it. And I would stick bits of tape together to make montages of sound. Nowadays, we do it all with computers. So I'm really interested in how composers work on their sounds. And there are many composers doing this. And actually, it's very easy. Tools are ubiquitous. Sounds are all around us. It's very easy for anybody to get to have a go at this. But I'm particularly interested in how I am making my own work over the past 20 years, how I'm developing um, and trying to make the sounds that are initially recorded in quite an anonymous way something personal. I'm quite happy to make sounds that, and pieces that I like, but ultimately I'm going to be sharing them with an audience. And of course I use a computer. So I make a bespoke set of tools that work against the sound's most prominent characteristic. Uh, a really simple example, you're listening to something in your living room, it's too loud, you turn it down. 
if I've got a sound that's very noisy, I need to make it less noisy, and I might use a filter. So I have a selection of sounds, I have a selection of descriptors, and I have a selection of processes that often work together with uh, certain particular types of sounds. So I end up creating a set of tools, and the most uh, useful analogy is a batterie de cuisine, with tools specific to certain sounds. And I begin to put these sounds together in the computer, um, one on top of the other, one after the other, kind of like a collage. But it has to be more than a collage. And that is another one of my sort of really important research questions. And whilst I said I like to work uh, with sound like a potter works with clay, I also, contrary to this acousmatic idea, like to think very visually. And I like to use sound to create an environment. Many people hear acousmatic music and will naturally picture something. It's often used these days as sound effects in motion pictures. But I like to create an environment that allows me to set foreground, background, um, earth, sky, a, a really concrete physical space within which I can put certain sonic agents that may be entirely natural to that environment, but also insert something completely surreal. So this example from uh, 2001 perfectly sums that up, that you have a very natural environment, but within that you've got a concrete slab. Finally, with a piece of music as a concrete sound file, we project this sound into space. For the most part, I work in stereo with two channels. And then you can listen to this over headphones or on your hi-fi at home. But we like to present this music in concert. And we have multiple loudspeakers around the space. And that explodes the sound into the space, as well as giving the people at the front row a sonic experience and the people at the back row a similar sonic experience. There's no score. So this makes analysis quite difficult. In fact, we have two forms of representation. The most two common forms are a waveform with time on the x-axis and amplitude on the y-axis, and the sonogram, again, with time on the x-axis, but frequency on the y-axis, and the quantity of certain frequencies uh, given by so the heat of the, co of the color. Uh, these are the two representations of the same piece, um, and you wouldn't be able to tell, but it's a piece by Alistair MacDonald called Equivalence, and it's made entirely of the sound of bricks. So this, again, doesn't tell us anything about the, the emotional content and the process that MacDonald has used to generate his work. <coughs> and most of the time, I'm given works that are completed pieces. And this is extremely tricky to then pull these apart and figure out how composers have worked. It's much better to find uh, composers that will tell you what went wrong and to be able to probe the sounds that they never used and the paths that they never took. Uh, so my current research is based on um, encouraging composers to show me and share with me everything that they did so that I can figure out what composers are doing when they're working with sounds in the dark. Thank you.